guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to another five minutes tutorial. Um, today we're going to be going over some stuff to do with the third person character. We're going to actually make a torch, um, which is a simple torch that we can switch on and off. And then in a later video we can look at um, battery pickups and things like that. <coughs> so, first thing you may notice is my scene's changed slightly. All I've done is I've removed the um, skylight and area light and rebuilt the lighting then just added a few basic um, point lights in the scene so I can get some dark areas that we can show the torch working. Anyway, first thing we're going to do is go straight into our third person character. A lot of work we do um, is going to be in the third person character and either in the event graph or in the viewport. And I'm going to go straight down and I'm going to click on the mesh inherited and then I'm going to go and into the add component section and look for spotlight um, don't confuse it with point light um, point light emits from a central point and it goes in all directions whereas a spotlight is defined by a cone basically um, you will see here yeah there you go the cone of a spotlight is basically the funnel you know you, you understand, I'm sure. Anyway, uh, so I'm just going to drag that spotlight straight into the mesh. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to parent that directly onto the head. And I'm going to show you why in a second. There we go. Now, you'll see that it's moved away. It's absolutely fine. That's what we wanted. I'm just going to grab the blue slider and pull it along. Now you see the same with the camera, what's happened is um, it's actually adopted all of the camera's movements. Now it's for idling purposes, especially in first person, um, if you didn't have this second, third person camera and you would just imagine you were in first person, um, you know, you're holding a, you're idling there but you're holding a torch and you can have that general slight shaky movement. Now that's quite important for um, immersion and realism. In a lot of games, if you've got, um, you imagine in Slenderman, you've got Torch, Torch doesn't move, um, you're not moving, you're stood dead still, it's not very realistic. In a realistic sense and terms, um, look at a game like Outlast, in Outlast, when you're holding that camera up with your night vision on, um, it actually sways and moves slightly. And again, with a lot of other games as well now, um, it's all about creating the most realistic experience possible. So, you know, silly little things like this do help to help to create that illusion of realism. Okay, anyway, back to the back to the tutorial. I'm just going to quickly explain some of the features that we're going to affect in the spotlight. Um, you can see here, if I zoom out slightly, it's a very, very wide spotlight, and I'm just going to pull the outer cone angle down, and you'll see how that's going to affect. Um, let's click out. You're going to see how that's going to affect. There you go. So I'll drop it down to around about 30, and you can see there that that's just meant that the it's brought the cone out slightly. And there's an inner cone angle as well for slightly brighter light. And I'm just going to open that up, you know, because it's not a uniform spotlights and torches are never uniform. Um, the attenuation radius is about a thousand, so that's attenuation is the distance and the distance that the fall off of light will cover. So you can see here, if I drop this down to, I don't know, um, very, very small, 277, it's very, very short, um, not very realistic. We want around about 1,100 to 1,000. That's absolutely fine for us because it's quite a powerful torch. And the intensity is obviously the brightness intensity. And you can leave that as it is. However, I'm going to go ahead and just drop mine down to 1,500. And then I'm going to compile and save. And that's everything in the viewport that we need to do is done. Okay, now let's head over to the event graph. And in the event graph, I'm going to go ahead and go straight down to... You remember with the draw HUD we did, um, we had an event begin play. I deleted mine, but you might have yours there still. So just go ahead and drag it off and out of the draw HUD bounds. And then I'm going to... Event begin play. Okay, so on event begin play, we're going to just select the spotlight and then I'm going to right click in the bounds and I'm going to type in set intensity 
of Spotlight. There you go. And then I can just pull the cable back into there. And the new intensity at begin play is going to be zero. Because obviously we don't want the light to be on when we start. And then on a key action, so for us we're going to use T for torch. So if T, so I'm just going to right click in the event graph and type in T and press enter. And then I'm going to copy, I'm going to select both of these with control. I'm going to copy them. And then I'm just going to paste them in here. On pressed, I'm going to set that to 100, uh, no, 1500. And then I'm going to paste that again. And I'm going to, on releasing the button, set it back to zero. And that should nicely work for us. Okay, and this should work in both instances of camera as well. I'm not sure how it's going to look with the um, with the third person character, but we'll find out in a second. Okay, as you can see, it's going to a darker area. There's a HUD, still working nicely. And now you can notice there's no torch, and then all of a sudden, you can see there's my torch there. And there's my torch there, and as I release T, it goes and then hold T down, it comes back up. And as I release T, it goes again. And that is my torch. And now let's just quickly zip out of there and hold down T. And it hasn't worked at all in the third person camera. Or has it? No, it has. There you go. I was just too far out. And again, it follows the player there. So actually, that's not too bad. Uh, my lighting's terrible in here, but for, for a point of example, um, yeah, that, that's okay. I'm okay with that. So I can run around and it doesn't actually affect the up and down, you can see there on the wall. But in general, that works absolutely fine. So, that's it. That's it for this video. Um, nice and easy. The next one we do on this is going to be adding um, a reduction in the intensity. So as you play through, it's going to drop its intensity down to zero, which would simulate batteries running out. And then we're going to have a battery pickup as well. Um, that you can pick back up and we'll recharge your recharge torch. Anyway, uh, as always, any comments, leave them down below. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. That would be great. Uh, really help me out. And any suggestions for future videos, then feel free to leave a comment down below.